hi guys and welcome back to my channel hi so you guys forgive the imbalance in lighting um the lighting is kind of motion sensor kind of lighting so if someone walks in and the light comes on if someone if someone does not come in for a while then the light goes off so forgive the imbalance in lighting because i think you guys would be seeing you guys would definitely be noticing it along the way in this video i've gotten lots of questions on this channel and even on instagram some of you guys have reached out to me on instagram as well and um, you guys are always asking kind of the same questions what what are you doing in south korea how did you get into south korea some of you guys already know about the gks scholarship so some of you guys are always asking how did you get this scholarship how do i apply apply for the scholarship share with us what you know about the scholarship and I'm so sorry you guys that for the longest time I haven't been able to make a video on this and it's because it's because a lot has been going on actually yeah so today's video is specifically to address any questions you guys might have asked me and just basically to clarify everything and share with you guys everything I know and I hope this video helps you so much um, I think the graduates GKS scholarship application kind of recently began and I hope this video in some way kind of guides you through your application process if you have any other questions when you're done watching this video you can reach out to me on Instagram or you can put your questions in the comment section and I will try to answer them I am in South Korea for my graduates program i'm on the gks scholarship i think it was kgsp before but then they changed it to gks yeah i think so so i feel like that's the base on which this video would be built i made notes and i hope we can go through everything i think there was someone who asked the question um and the question was is gks scholarship both graduates and undergraduates and before we even start yes there's gks bachelors and there is gks masters and gks phd and there will be links in the description box as well i can only share with you so much you have to do your research for yourself um but of course this video is to guide you so that you do your research properly global korea scholarship it's to provide international students with opportunities to conduct advanced studies in undergraduates and graduate programs at higher educational institutions in the republic of korea that's the purpose of this scholarship available options in universities which is basically like the types so you know that's the question i talked about before someone asked there is undergraduate gks scholarship it's for four-year courses at designated universities and then there is graduate gks scholarship and this is for masters or phd courses at general graduate schools of korean universities so that answers your question now the next thing is the application timeline for undergraduate the announcement is usually released in September in the year before you are expected to be in Korea. GKS 2022 undergraduate applicants and recipients because the scholarship has already been awarded for undergraduate scholars. The notice was announced in September 2021 and the results of the successful candidates were released in January 2022. For graduates, it's a bit different. The announcement is usually released in the February of the planned year. This video might be more helpful for people for graduate students who are going to be applying to come to korea this year because it's kind of timely um and then the results of the successful candidates will be released in june of 2022 i feel like at this point you know what gks scholarship is about we've covered the basis i don't really know a lot about like undergraduate degree application i'm sorry i'm a graduate student so we are going to focus on gks graduate scholarship so on the 11th of february application guidelines for the GKS graduate scholarship program was sent out. Of course, you're not going to have trouble looking for these things online, but just in case, just in case, I would put links in the description. So for the graduate scholarship program, there are two tracks. There is the university track and there is the embassy track. I went through the embassy track. I really do not know so much about university track. Most of my experiences are from the embassy track, but let's just talk about them in summary. Via university track, you can apply to one university and one graduate degree program. On the other hand, via embassy track, you could apply to three different why am I putting out five fingers? You could apply to three different universities. Of course, I think your major would have to be similar in a way. I'm sure there might be other differences. This is like the basic difference between the two. I think this might also be a difference. With university track, you have to be recommended by a professor in a university, in the university you've chosen. But then with embassy track, it has to be based on the recommendation of both the embassy and the university. 
So, we've taken care of my patched thrifts. At this point, I want to give you a tip. When applying for this scholarship, whether embassy track or university track, research. I know it sounds cliche, and I mean, I've been saying this ever since this video started, but really, do your research. Research your university. Research your professors. Research their research work. Do not go into any of this blindly. So when it comes to universities, this is so important. Like, there is this thing in Korea that I was so unaware of before I came here. Most universities have multiple campuses across different locations. Let's use Korea University. Korea University has a campus in Seoul and also has a campus in Sejong City. Hanyang University has a campus in Seoul. Hanyang University also has a campus in Ansan. Dongguk University has a campus in Seoul. Dongguk University also has a campus in Ilsan. Let's say, for example, you like city life. You like the city life. You like to be, you know, in the midst of tall buildings and hustle and bustle. So, let's say you're that kind of person. You decide to apply to Korea University because you know, they have a program you want and of course Korea University is in Seoul. And then you come here and then you realize that your campus maybe is not in Seoul, it's in Sejong City. Or it's in another city, but you wanted Seoul. This is something that's very important and I feel like not many people make mention of it. And then maybe you could be going through like, you know, there's an Excel file. I'm sure you guys have seen it. If you're applying for this scholarship, then you've seen it. There's an Excel file with, you know, universities and programs they offer. But sometimes it's very possible you might not take notes of this stuff you want to apply to maybe moral ethics and philosophy as a program you're looking at Seoul universities you have to check what campus your department would be in and the location of that campus so you do not come here thinking you would be somewhere you know you prepare yourself body and soul and then you find yourself somewhere else it could also go you know the reverse way you are someone who likes peace you like quiet you like to live in like smaller cities and stuff like that and you apply to university thinking your campus would be in you know a smaller region and then you find yourself in like really in a really big city you need to know where your campus would be research your professors you are a fresh graduate from the college of pharmacy in a university somewhere in your country and you want to further in pharmaceutical microbiology for instance and your research work was on something and you would like to further in this direction the first thing you have to do is ask yourself where do i want to live do i want to be in seoul do i want to be in ilsan do i want to be in osan where do i want to be and i think the next thing would be to find out you know what are the best schools in south korea for this particular program this is so important to you guys because i heard this from a friend recently it's something i didn't know either but i'm letting you guys know beforehand if you plan to stay in south korea to work for instance there is a point system there is a point system if you want to extend your visa let's put it that way and one of these things one of the things taken into consideration is the ranking of your school so you have to think carefully when applying when you've you know you found your university you found certain universities you want look for professors go to your department college of let's use pharmacy college of pharmacy for instance every university has a web page so go to that page look at the professors most of the time um this this universities usually put like kind of like the recent works of these professors like recent publications what they are currently working on and if it's something that aligns with yours send an email to that professor and introduce yourself this could still be possible for you guys that are applying to this scholarship now if you've applied you've sent in your application or you're getting your documents together if this is something you've not done please do it you can kind of like pause this video at this point or you know what just watch till the end send an email of introduction to them if you have like research papers you've published in the past or you know any work that kind of shows you to be a serious person include that in the email good day professor i am this from here i'm applying to this program through the gks scholarship i maybe looked through your profile on social and social sites and i saw your research work and it's something i am greatly interested in our you know research projects align and i would be so honored to work with you find attached below some of my publications i look forward to hearing from you please do that and the reason i'm saying this is because this is how you build a relationship with them and something someone told me when i got here is that most times these professors do not reply to the very first mail you send and it's because they're kind of trying to gauge if you're a serious student or you're not a serious student if maybe in a week's time you do not get a response try sending them another email two weeks after the first one i feel like i've talked too much in this video so another good thing about reaching out to your professor when you apply through a embassy track i feel like i'm talking more about embassy track because i came in through embassy track with embassy track the embassy reviews your documents first of all that's like the first round of selection and from there documents of the selected candidates would be sent to the university 
university researching your professor and you know having communication with them before your documents get to that university is so important because in a way it kind of helps you that professor is going to look at your documents like with interest because they know you you've spoken with them you sound promising, they've seen your publications, they know you are exactly what they need. So that's gonna help you, you know, that's gonna help you when it comes to like selection from the university. So this is something you should know. What have we talked about so far? Research your university, research your professor. Now the third thing, research the language. So as you must know with this program, you have to go through one year of language training. You would have to be grilled. If you know at this period in your life you are not busy you are not really in a job right now so you have a lot of free time on your hand please use this time to start to learn the language i say this for many reasons actually before coming here like i said i didn't know the language but i knew characters so meaning i could read characters but then i wouldn't know what the characters meant i saw this question someone asked this question on my youtube channel and the person was like where do i go to if i want to learn korean you know as a beginner and someone replied coursera Thank you to whoever replied because I was, it's what I'm going to talk about now. There is a course on Coursera, there will be a screenshot somewhere here. It's called First Step Korean, it's offered by Yonsei University. This course gives you um, an insight into like very basic Korean. So this could be your starting point and then from there you build up to maybe watching YouTube videos or like using sites to learn because you know there are sites dedicated to Korean language and there is a particular one it's called talk to me in Korean I think I can put the link to that one in the description box and I will for you guys alongside this course you could visit this website talk to me in Korean it's a really good website and there are levels too so you could start from level one and grow I feel like if you do these two things when you get this scholarship it's gonna be easier for you because when you come in here it's Korean all the way like they teach in Korean they teach Korean in Korean this program offered by Yonsei University and the website I just told you guys about would be a perfect way to start um now another reason I would say take this course is that at the end of this course you are given a certificate and this was something I did actually when applying I didn't know any Korean I was genuinely interested in Korean language um, because my sisters both my sisters um, studied Chinese language and I've always been fascinated by characters like and I was like you know my sisters learn Chinese I will learn Korean and also it was a really great way to boost my application because as someone judging documents if I come across this you know a certificate that shows first step Korean and I know you are someone who doesn't know how to speak the language it's going to make me believe that you at least have an interest in the language you are willing to learn and maybe this opportunity would be good for you so we've got that covered tips I needed to share with you guys research your university research your professors and research the language okay it's getting really cold here but we have to go on so now we're going to talk about the documents you need to download if you follow the link in my description box it takes you to a page um that page is basically like studying korea gks notice stuff like that now this is for people who are yet to apply so if you've applied you can still follow through now number 249 application guidelines of global korea scholarship for graduate degrees so let's click on that now at the very bottom of the page like a table and it's called attached file list do i have the screen record so these are the three documents you need to download this one university information application forms frequently asked questions and answers and application guidelines so we will download them and open them together i've already downloaded them but you know for the sake of this video let's do it together once more downloaded downloaded and downloaded so um about university information when you open and kind of unzip you know the documents that had to do with university information this is what you should see and um we have like English and Korean translations, which is always very helpful. So this very first file here um, provides information about like available courses for embassy track applicants and university track applicants general. Like I said, I didn't go through university track, so I'm not so sure what that means because there is another document here another excel file that shows available you know universities and departments for university track regional but if you're embassy track then this very first document is the one you need so let's open it up so um hope you guys can see the screen so this is um, available department for embassy track which is what we need our university track general down here we have like all the universities 
there is Aju, Busan, Chonam, Chongang, and so on and so forth. You just, you know, need to go like this and they would keep coming up. There is the university. There is a campus and location, which is very important. Take note of this column, you guys, campus and location. Then the department, the division, whether master's is available. So for certain universities, if master's is not available, there would be like an X here, period. Then the language, this is also really important, you guys, the language of instruction for your program. Korean and English, Korean 100%, so everything would be in Korean. English 100%. So you just have, I feel like that column is also very important. If you wouldn't be able to do your master's in Korean and English or pure Korean, then this would be a better, like English 100% would be much better for you. You just have to really look, although I hear some people say that, even though you see English 100% here, most of the time there would still be a bit of Korean incorporated into your program, which will not hurt because, I mean, you spent a year learning and you can do it. And there is also doctoral. If there is an X, it means you cannot pursue a PhD in that program in that university. It doesn't offer that program. So in like the remarks section, you would usually see things like whether certain stuff is available. For example, here it says AI major available um, for some. If the program is going to be like 100% English, then you could see things like you need to have maybe an IL 6.0 and above, stuff like that. That's just remarks. Let's look for a university that has a campus in another location that I am quite sure of. Let's go to Korea University. Korea University is right here. Uh, no, that's Korea Tech. That's Korea Tech. Let's go for Korea University. Okay, yeah, this is Korea University. Now, this is actually very important. Let's look at the campus. So there is the Seoul campus. As you can see, there is a Seoul campus. Um, now there is a Sejong campus and it's possible you could be you know searching up stuff and you do not pay attention to the fact that there are multiple campuses so that's something you have to take into consideration but yeah we've looked at this and I'm sure you guys understand like what this first document I think contains university information so you find information about the programs language it's offered in campuses just relevant stuff so you know what to choose the, like the documents directly under it which is number two is basically the same thing but in korean you guys can go through this on your own and then the next thing i feel like we should look at is overview of universities now when i went through this i was kind of surprised because last year um university like information on the universities were all together like in one huge file and if you want to find a university you would have to scroll scroll just that was how it was last year but this year it's so much better you guys because there is a pdf document for every single university that's a good thing so you could literally just look for the university you want and get info on it so for example hongik university you just have to click on this and everything you need to know on hongik comes out there is korean there is also english so you will be fine you will be fine okay this is kaist everything you need to know about kaist so the next file is um, titled application forms frequently answered questions this one is pretty easy to understand it's like questions people have asked over time and they kind of felt they need to include it here so you could have answers to some questions that might be plaguing you i think i would like to talk particularly about the korean language program because i feel like i have experiences i would like to share with you guys and some things i have to let you guys know i almost forgot to say this oh, well you're going to see it when you download the documents um in the file titled application gks application form frequently asked questions and answers there are two word documents there the frequently asked questions and answers and the application form if you were looking for where the application form is that's where it is um in this particular segment we are going to be focused on the frequently asked questions and answers so let's open her up um is it mandatory for all gks scholars to pass at least level three in topic after one year of the korean language program it's mandatory <laughs> it's mandatory you spend about nine to ten months here in language school and at the end of it you should have a topic three if you don't know what topic is topic is test of proficiency in korean it's like ielts or toefl but for korean language there is a grading system and it's topic one to topic six the degree program i applied to is taught in english only may i be exempt from the korean language program no 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 you still have to as long as you're a gks scholar the Korean language program is mandatory and I think it's actually 
I mean, I'm speaking for myself. I've always wanted to learn a new language and this was a beautiful opportunity. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think all these questions, these are the three I really wanted to talk about. And also, if you do not get it to pick three within one year of Korean language program, you would have to extend. Although there are certain cases where your university could be like, okay, come, at least you have more than an 84 now. <laughs> I'm sure you guys may be wondering what all these points mean. But basically, a topic 3 is from 120 points above. I feel like it's too early to talk about this with you guys, but let's just talk about it. If you cannot get this by the time you're done with language school, most of the time, you are not allowed to proceed to your actual university. You would have to do an extra 6 months, and you can only do an extra 6 months of language training if you have 84 points and above in you know any of the topics you've previously written yeah that's something i felt i should let you guys know it's, it's not kind of important right now because you guys are just applying but just have it in mind that that is how this works we are not looking at the application forms now we will look at the application forms later before we do that let's look at something else so guidelines for application um so basically this is where you would find certain information that might be helpful in some way so yeah this is basically what you would find there are some things okay yes this is this is um what i was talking about before type a and type b universities so before while applying you have to go through this while making your choice because if you're going through embassy track you cannot you cannot it actually says so here yeah embassy track applicants must choose three different desired universities I must include one university from type B. Um, yeah, this is the quota. The quota is basically how many select, how many candidates will be selected from each country. So for Nigeria is six. Um, we have countries with much higher quota. Like take for example India. India is 22. The Philippines is. I know the Philippines is usually high. Oh, 14. Not that much, but much. All the same. So the country with the highest quota is actually Indonesia, 27. Ah, the highest quota is actually. Vietnam. Vietnam has the highest quota. Oh. So yeah, you can look through this list to gain an insight into, you know, your country's quota and what to expect. Eligibility and restrictions. Ah, the selection process. So I can speak for embassy track. Um, you submit your documents to your embassy and the first round of selection is by your embassy. So your embassy recommends candidates denied. Um, then there is a second round of selection. So basically, I think Nayid sends the documents to the universities. And that's where we now have the second and the third round of selection. And then there's an announcement of scholars. There are certain documents that are necessary and mandatory, are required. And then there are some of them that are optional. But if you have them, then definitely put them there, please. Put them there, anything to help with your application. Let's go through them. First of all, there is Form 1 to Form 8, which are like... The required documents one letter of recommendation this is strange because last year we had to submit three letters of recommendation bachelor's graduation certificate of course you would need that if you're applying for your master's your certificate and your transcript what else proof of citizenship yes you would need that topic or english proficiency test you would need that well you do, it's optional they say it's optional but if maybe you've written topic before include that as well um if maybe your program will be in english or even if it's not going to be in english but you want to show like you are proficient in english language as well then by all means submit your ielts if you have it submit your toefl if you have it um publish books and research papers so if you have won any academic awards for instance if you've won any academic awards or you've published any papers then be sure to include those as well this numbering is how you arrange your documents because i think last year we were asked to write the numbers for example on our application form we had to write one the gks applicant agreement we had to write a number seven published research work we had to write the number 20. i really do not know if you guys have been asked to do that here but you should look through these documents look through it properly i'm only glazing the bite with you yes another thing i want to talk about is the number of documents to submit you have to submit four sets of documents um and what i did and i think what a group of other people did was to get like four really large envelopes one one set of documents will be your originals then the remaining three would be photocopied sets of documents okay so this is it right here let's open it up 
we will try to go through all these forms one by one. So this is form one. And from the list of documents that are required, the very first thing on that list is form one, your application form. So this is the very first thing you fill. So here you, you just have to select, are you embassy track, are you university track? It's a general application, at least for me it was, it was a general application. So you click general, if it's research and development, click research and development. Then your desired field of study. Let's say you're a pharmacist, you want to further in pharmaceutics, you would have to go through university information, you know the file we looked at, the one that contains information on like universities and courses they offer. There is a particular section that, that um, lets you know the department, so social science, technology, natural science, philosophy for instance, I think that would be social science or liberal arts, I'm not sure. Um, engineering, computer engineering, it's going to be technology and engineering. Um, information of applicants, um, language abilities. So if you have a topic, you've taken the topic exams, this would be where you would, you would fill in all that information. Also, your English proficiency test scores, if you, if you like, have academic background, thesis, publications, awards, if any of that if you have any of that. So this is where you put in your CGPA from your previous degree program. And then um, here is where you put in like GPA on your transcripts for each year of your study. If needed, you may modify columns. So if, for example, you did a five-year course or a six-year course, you could always modify this column and put in, you know, extra years and extra GPAs for those years. So this is where you put in your choice of university, which like I said, you guys have to be very meticulous about do your research, know the university, know the location, know the professors. Is their career path kind of aligned with yours? Choice of university and department. So of course, do your research before you make a choice. Now the next thing is your form two. And form two is your personal statement. You have to research and come up with a personal statement that you know an examiner or anyone would read and know you are serious about wanting the scholarship. Um, yeah, you're serious about the scholarship. So any bit of information about your life that you know would kind of would kind of emphasize. Um, the reason you are going for this program and the reason why this scholarship would help you achieve whatever dream it is you have whatever it is you have to put it here and I would advise you know you cannot you cannot exactly write a personal statement in one go you would have to write it at least for me I know I've wrote like I wrote it multiple times and I would always give it to people to help me go through I would advise you do that write rewrite until you have that conviction that this personal statement is good enough then form three is your study plan and what do you intend to do with this program what do you intend to do during the course of your korean language year what do you intend to do during um your actual program study period this is where you have to write all of that and also your future plans after study do you intend to stay in korea do you intend to move to another country do you intend to take up another scholarship maybe gks um, phd that's if you are here for your masters there are multiple videos on here that you could that will kind of give you an insight into what you should put into your personal statements look up those videos i don't know why it's kind of messed up on my system um, I guess if I expand it's going to be okay, but form 4, you can see it here is your research proposal. So if you're applying for your masters, you do not have to fill this up. Um, then recommendation letter. So it's actually quite strange that this year you guys are required to bring in one letter of recommendation. You would have to fill this first part, like your name, your country of citizenship, what you're applying for, and your intended major, and then your referee would feel what comes next, which is all of this. Your referee would have to write a recommendation letter of his own, using his own template, using his own letterhead, everything. And in his recommendation letter, he has to include the following, how long he has known you, your abilities, just stuff like that, stuff about you. And then he would attach this form to his own letter and you know, put it in an envelope and send to you. Now that would be the original and you would have to make three copies of it. We've talked about this. You have to have four envelopes, your original and three photocopies. So same thing applies, you know, with the recommendation letter as with every other form here. Yeah, you would not have to fill this by hand. Like you could type in your information here and then send this particular form, maybe via mail, and he would fill in this remaining portion and then write his own letter and send it to you. So based on the fact that your referee would have to add 
date and signature at the end of each recommendation letter and he would have to put it in an envelope that has to be signed across the back flap and sent to you it's going to be impossible to send it to you via mail he would have to use like a delivery service or something and this is why it's very important to start to plan ahead of time because i have a story about recommendation letters i got my recommendation letter the particular day like the exact day that was the deadline of submission for this scholarship program and it's just it's crazy so i would advise you as early as possible fill your parts and send these documents to him via mail and keep in touch with him call him every evening or so call him and let him know that this is something he has to send via DHL or something because he can't send it via mail so he has to try to fill it as soon as possible letter of invitation you do not need this then GKS um, applicants agreement so just read through this and you know tick what you have to take you would have to do a medical examination much later on when you get the scholarship but this is just like a pre-personal medical assessment so you just feel that as necessary yeah so that's everything for that i need you to take a deep breath this is going to be it's going to be a long process but it's 100 doable you just have to tell yourself you can do it and you just have to <laughs> now the documents in this application form are forms one to eight which are your required ones and based on the program you're going for you have to you know select the ones you feel when you're done print them out um that would be your originals of course and then you make three photocopies um and then i think you arrange them based on the numbers here five eight depending on the ones you need for your program then for certificate required same thing you get your originals keep it together with the originals in number order in sequence and you make the photocopies and you arrange them sequentially as well if you have any other published awards published papers awards prizes whatever you want to include that comes everything is just everything has to be in the sequence of the numbers here like 1 to 18 or 1 to it was more than it's simple like based on the number sequence here print make your photocopies arrange i felt overwhelmed a lot and i was worried i didn't even know what i was doing i don't know i hope I've kind of made it easier for you to go through these documents and kind of understand what's going on. This is as far as I can go, I think. I think I've covered everything about this application process and I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you have enough time to put stuff together and I hope you submit when you should. So yeah, good luck in your application process and I really, really, really wish you all the best, okay? If this is your first time on this channel, hi, welcome to my channel. Um, I am a Nigerian living in South Korea. I got here about six months ago. And this channel is just basically about documenting my experiences living here. You know, I'd like to share stuff with you guys. And if you would like to keep on seeing that kind of content, you know, content about life in South Korea as a foreigner, then please subscribe to my channel. I haven't really been so consistent because for the past six months, I think I've been trying to settle in. I've been trying to settle in. I didn't really know what was what I was doing like it took me this long to figure out how to go about stuff but I feel like I've gotten to a point now where I can handle making videos and still keeping up with school work so you guys should expect to see a video from me every Sunday every Friday or Sunday I'm yet to make up my mind about it but um, subscribe to be a part of the family thank you so much for watching I really hope this video was helpful I hope you learned one thing or two and I'll see you in my next video bye